heart attack. What are you doing anyway? I couldn't sleep. It'd be over soon. Sometimes I just want to stay here with you. I'd understand if you were having second thoughts. I've said I'll do it. Breakfast? Sure. Yeah. Long night? Uh, two concussions, broken nose, possible ruptured spleen. Well, if you can delay going home for just a little bit longer, I've got a job for you. Or rather, the DCI has. Mate, my shift ends in half an hour. Won't take long. Can I have any writing? I'll get you out of the station. Unless you want to take it up with driver. Where are we going? To a safe house out in the sticks. There's a bunch of anarchists that are on trial and one of the key witnesses Eddie Galaccio is giving crucial evidence this afternoon. Anyway, he seems to think that there's a bunch of them going to try and stop him, so him and his girlfriend have been put in there for protection. So where do I fit in? One of the officers, babysitting, is ill, so driver wants you to examine him. I don't know, send him home, hospital, I'll take over if necessary. You ever going to get into CAD permanently? I doubt it. After that baby smuggling thing, I thought you were driver's blue-eyed boy. You ready? Right. What are you looking for? A letter from the rheumatologist at St Phil's. It was here yesterday. You should pick up your post as soon as it comes in. Oh, thanks, Karen. Any other brilliant suggestions? Keep your hair on. Come on, let's have a look. Do I take it last night didn't go well, then? I wonder if they put it in Heston's room by mistake. <sighs> Kevin! No, it didn't exactly go according to plan. Well, I suppose that's to be expected, meeting your brother for the first time. Half-brother. Oh, it's always going to be tricky. Can we talk about something else, please? I did a bunch of anarchists and hippies get involved in a plot to blow up the bank. Search me. Do you know the officer who's ill? No, they're both from a different force. Steve's ill as well. I don't know what's the matter with him. You shouldn't really be out here. Uh, are you a doctor? Yeah. Come on, they're through here. Oh, do me one of those, will you? I could do with some caffeine to get the old brain working. Everything all right? Oh, it's a miracle I'm here. I had a flat. Would you like me to take a look? No, it's all right. I'm going to get the local grease monkey to sort it out. Oh, really? It's no bother? Just an amazing idea. It's the painting Dad's always going on about. Full size, limited edition. It's framed and everything. Well, it would be perfect. Do you think we could get it in time? Well, I don't see why not if we order it today. Two weeks left and you're still worrying about presents? Actually, I've got everything else sorted. I suppose you had things planned months ago, right down to the last detail. Well, you know me. Well, go ahead and order it. Yeah, understood. Three hours. OK. I'll hold the fort till then. All right, bye. OK. Someone's going to come and pick you up, take you to court just after midday. Until then, everything stays the same. Regular patrols of the grounds, old doors, windows to be kept locked, no unauthorised outgoing phone calls. In fact, the only different thing is my ugly mug to look at. What about them? Well, we don't want an ambulance to draw attention to where we are. I thought we were safe here. Yeah. yeah, we are, but the boss doesn't want to take any risks. How are they? Uh, not great. Looks like food poisoning, but I should take him to hospital just to be sure. Do you want to do that? I've got the CID card if I need it. Well, you'll be on your own. No, that's fine. Driver's going to send somebody over later. Are you sure? Mm hmm OK. How about a nice cuppa? How's that cuppa doing? I'm coming. I'm worried about both of them getting ill like that. Yeah, well, I'll try not to worry too much. It'll only be a few more hours. Yeah, seems like we've been here a lifetime already. Hmm. Tell me a bit about this group of yours. Uh, I grew up 
with some of them. Knew others from squats and my student days. It's about showing the public there's a different way to live their lives, about changing the system through peaceful protest. Oh. That was the idea, anyway. Yeah, those uh, people in, in court don't sound too peaceful. They started to use our marches as a front for attacking businesses. Their argument is the only pure reaction to the violence of the system is carefully targeted counter-violence. Found out they were planning on blowing up a bank. They wanted to kill innocent people just to make a point. I presume that's when you came to see us. We passed on information until our cover was blown. Yeah, good. It can't be easy informing on your friends. I just want things to get back to normal. Yeah, settle down, have kids. Hard to see beyond the court case at the moment. You are doing the right thing. You okay? I'm not feeling very well. Both the plain clothes had gone. Yeah, it worked. A new guy's turned up now. Looks like another flat floor. Not long now. How are you feeling? Well, I've stopped throwing up. I think you got the same lurgy the cops came down with. I suppose. I could stay here while I'm giving evidence. That's very kind, but. Well, there's no need for you to be there. But I want to stay with you. I'll be back before you know it. Oh, couldn't we just jump into the car? Drive away. Just lie low for a bit. With the court case. We'll go ahead with you there or not. They've got loads of evidence. They've got your written testimony. It's not the same as being there in person. Of course. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. And that's been confirmed, has it? OK. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Come in. Kevin. Yeah? You don't have to bottle it up, you know. If you need me, you know where I am. Yeah, whatever. What's that? A syringe. I better log it. We do have junkies out in the country. Yeah, I know. Come on, we shouldn't be out here. Yes, I've been to New York once at Christmas, and I have to say it was quite superb. So the leave. Well, the German market in Birmingham's all well and good, but you have to hand it to the axe. Can I have the time off? Well, it's not looking good. Oh, but far be it from me to stand in the way of one of our hard-working doctors catching a bit of R&R. &R. In fact, perhaps you can help. A little favour. Sure, whatever you want. There's a Friends of St Phil's meeting later. St Phil's? Yes, it's quite dull and almost entirely pointless, but we earn good brownie points if somebody from the mill attends. So if I go, I can have the leave? I'm glad we understand each other. Normally I'd be happy to attend the meeting, but today I'm double booked. Business or pleasure? Well, business, I suppose you could call it. Helping an old friend from the forces at a careers fair just for an hour or two. A careers fair? I think it's important for young people to hear it from somebody who's been there, seen it, done it and got the T-shirt. These days it's all me, me, me. But the military teaches you how to put others first. So, will you do it?
Amber, is everything okay? I thought I heard you talking to someone. I was just as myself. It's the first sign of madness. Look, I know that you're sick of this place, but it's really important that we don't do anything stupid. One stray phone call. Oh, no, I understand. Anyways, the first thing that the cops did when we arrived was took our mobiles. You feeling better? A little, thanks. Eddie, you'll be pleased. Yeah. Hmm. I don't deserve him. How long have you known each other? Um, we've been going out for um, maybe two years. Mm. Did you meet in the collective? Yeah, I was a member for six months, just before he took me under his wing. Mm. <laughs> uh, listen about earlier. It's okay. I shouldn't have said anything. No, no. You were right. Someone's cheered up. Yeah, guess what? Rich and Spence have invited me to New York for Christmas. Mmm, it's great. Yeah, timing couldn't be better. They've launched a new mobile. It's not due out on this side of the pond for months. You're going all that way just to buy a phone? You should be ice skating outside the Rockefeller or window shopping at Macy's. It's not going to be like Home Alone 2, you know. We're going to party hard. Hey, you should come with us. Uh, I don't think so. Why not? I remember those two. We didn't exactly see eye to eye. Exactly. That's why I need you there to keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> Doesn't sound like my idea of fun, watching you and your mates getting bladdered. Anyway, Mum likes us all to be home at Christmas. Well, if you're sure. I used to love family Christmases as a kid. Anyway, what's your mum up to? She'll miss you if you're in the States. Gaffer, I wanted to see you today. Nothing serious, just some advice. Can't it wait till this afternoon? I'm heading off to a recruitment fair. Hmm. I suppose the NHS always needs fresh blood. Actually, I'm there as a former member of Her Majesty's Armed Forces. You are joking. I don't joke about the army. You're really going to stand out in front of a bunch of impressionable kids and sell them a life in the military? A career in the Armed Forces is one of the most reputable I can think of. Hmm. Strip away all the glamour and it's just about killing people. I beg your pardon. Don't stop on my account. I was merely trying to impress on Dr. Husky the honour of a career in the services. I was going to say, if I had kids, I'd rather they chose a career based on healing over one based on violence. I'm sure you'd agree there's more to a military career than that. Well, it does offer valuable skills and life lessons. OK. And if Chris came to you a few years ago and said that he was off to Helmand, and you didn't think that he was mature enough to make an informed decision. Well, I'd be concerned for him, of course. The military offers amazing opportunities for education. A structured career, travel, honour. Honour? Come on. The commanders target kids from underprivileged areas because the politicians will always need more cannon fodder. You live in a very narrow little world, sunshine. need to know what you were doing with her. I don't know anything about it. I heard you talking earlier. And I've called a couple of the numbers. One of them is my chief inspector's home answer phone. <laughs> well, maybe it belonged to Steve or Michael. No way. Why would a cop need to hide that in the bog? What's going on, Amber? Have you ever been briefed? It's vital that Eddie doesn't find out. I know what. When Driver took over the case, she became my cover officer. 
My name's Helen James. I'm a police officer, covert ops. Are you serious? I was assigned to infiltrate the collective. We'd had information that this group was becoming dangerous. What about your relationship with Eddie? Well, I've always had some sympathy for their aims. You know, this simple life, exposing the evils of materialism. Rule one of lying, base it on something true. Right. Well, your job's nearly done. This isn't a job. Hey. It's okay. Of course. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. So he turns to him and he says, you better put it away, there's a policeman coming. I've spoken to Dr. Clay. They've done some tests on the officers at the hospital. Doesn't look like the sort of bug you'd find in undercooked meats. You think they were poisoned? What's the bet in there? If I got this analysed, it would be the same sort of stuff that made them ill. A quick stab to the pizza box. Bob's your uncle. Must have dropped it in the dark. Explains what made you ill earlier. I didn't have any. What? We're vegetarians. Anyway, why poison the food? Because sick people make softer targets. I need backup fast. I've spotted men in the grounds. Okay, we'll do. The backup's still miles away. Just spotted another bunch out the back. Who are they? Oh, don't ask me. Have you still got sympathy for the cause? What oh, do you think I invited them here? Well, I can't believe that they just stumbled across this place by accident. A lot of planning's gone into this, you know. And why am I getting the third degree? I'm just about to appear as a prosecution witness. Perhaps they just want to talk. Oh, yeah, let's ignore the sledgehammer at the front door. I'm just saying. It was you, wasn't it? You must have told them where we are. Well, hold on a minute. That's impossible because... The truth! And what the hell's going on? Wait a minute. The phone call. Please say that you didn't. I just don't want you to go to court, OK? What? I thought that if I let John Smith know where we are... Well, you just pop over and we'd have a nice chat over a cup of tea. Who's John Smith? A psycho out there! Why would you go behind my back like this? Collective. You still want to be mates with them, don't you? I take it that this Smith is from another cell. He leads the most violent group. I'm going to take my chances. You can't leave me on my own. Then tell me what the hell's going on. Why? Why don't you just talk to him? It's Smith, you really have no idea, have you? He just wants to persuade you not to go. Oh, yeah. Smith's really good at persuading people, usually by beating members of the family senseless, and if that doesn't work... If you're trying to flush Smith out into the open, it's well beyond your brief. Why don't you just at least talk to him? Hang on. What brief? What I meant was your decision to appear as a witness. Well, that's not a brief. Why are you suddenly so keen on me not testifying? I'm not who you think I am. What the hell's that supposed to mean? She's a police officer. But she's got herself mixed up with your friend John Smith. What? I'm sorry. I didn't want you to, to find out. Oh, well, you told her all this? News to me too. Well, then this is a joke, right? Three years of lies. You have been keeping a low profile, haven't you? I've tried talking to him, but he won't. Then it's time for me to go to plan B. No! Don't be an idiot, mate! Have you any idea how sharp this thing is? You said you were just going to talk to him. Yeah. Well, I say a lot of things. No! Come back! If you want to see your girlfriend's face, the way you remember it! If I didn't know any better, 
I'd say he wasn't taking me seriously. What's the matter? It's the trouble in paradise. He's making sure that he gets to court. And what happened to John? I don't think Eddie's doing the right thing. Eddie's right. You just want to kill innocent people just to make a point. Collateral damage! You're beginning to sound like one of them! Anyway, don't worry. <laughs> he's not going to have got far. I'm not come on my own. What if he's escaped? <laughs> what if he's already on his way to court? <laughs> well, then, then I'll have no use for you or that dumb copper. Let's see where he's got to. one should never forget that these days one of the primary functions of the armed forces is to work with bodies like the UN to bring peace and stability throughout the world. For the individual it's all about fostering a sense of team spirit whilst meeting new goals and challenges and the possibilities after your period of service are almost limitless. I think they'll find the others. I'm searching for them now. I'm glad you came back. I'm not a hero. I thought about running. But you didn't. The idea of that man attacking Amber couldn't bear it. I keep forgetting Amber's not a real name. Should be okay, bit of concussion, nothing more. I do. I'm here. I'm sorry. For what? For lying or for being found out? I love you. You don't know what you're saying. Would you come with me to the hospital? Give me one good reason. I'm 14 weeks pregnant. You need to save your strength. I was trying to do the right thing. You have to believe me. Is she really pregnant? So she says. And the baby? Well, after what's happened, we can't be sure. I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but I still expect to see you in court. Of course. After I'm done, I think I'll go and see her in hospital. Good. I'm ready for you now. I've spoken to driver. And? Well, Amber was... I mean, Helen was phoning her almost every day, trying to work out what was going to be said in court. Driver had her suspicions, but I don't think she realised how close she'd got. She should never have been allowed to. True, but sometimes it's difficult not to. Thank you. Yes. It's been a few years now. Yeah, can't wait, mate. I'll book the flight when I get home, yeah? All right. Hi. Saw your uh, talk earlier. Very impressive. Thank you. I'm Howard Bellamy, by the way, ex-captain with the Aston Regiment, now working for the Services Support Agency. Gina Williams, ex-major with the Witten Regiment. You miss it? All the time. But there's plenty to do on Civvy Street. Mm. That's per your lecture. Well, you've got to make the most of what life sends you. My thoughts exactly. So. Well... <sighs> I should get on. Absolutely, me too. If you want to, um... Come on. Chat some more. Because we were doing so well already. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
embossed. Classy. Thank you. So, are you going to use that then? Yes. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll give you a call. Good. Bye then. Bye. Is Mr Jones being evicted? Just tell him to go before I have to get the police involved. Get off! I love his surprise! I'm not dying. There's no need to get carried away. It's about you scaring me. What is it? Come on, spit it out. It's pathetic holding yourself up in this stinking pit. You're pathetic. You've got everything you could want. <sighs> oh, God.